Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the Tuesday of the fourth week of Advent, and also we remember St. Anastasia. St. Anastasia is mentioned in the Roman canon. She lived during the fourth century and was a victim of the Diocletian persecutions. She was a consecrated virgin, um, and even though she was married, she lived a chaste life and dedicated her, her life to helping the poor and the needy. She also was known as one who would help give antidotes to potions of poison and such that were being given through the time of the persecutions. The powers that be tried to get her, A, to lose her virginity, and B, to give up her faith uh, in favor of the Roman pagans. And she did neither, and eventually she was put to death as a martyr. So today we remember Saint Anastasia. And so let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, and deed, so that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let's say together the first form of the confidier. Almighty Father, you know my deepest secrets. I confess that I have, through my own fault, sinned against your holy laws, in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I sincerely regret my sins, and I am truly sorry for offending you. I ask, Father, that in your mercy you pardon my sins. I promise to change my way of living so that through a deeper holiness I may better serve you throughout the rest of my life. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to say two Hail Marys. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. You are the glory of Jerusalem, the surpassing joy of Israel. You are the splendid boast of our people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Your divine decree, by your divine decree, the Word was made flesh in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. As we commemorate the miracle of the Incarnation, inspire us to your service and guide us to your truth. Dwell in our hearts and hear her prayers in our behalf, for she is truly the Mother of God. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Hannah brought Samuel with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and presented him at the temple of the Lord in Shiloh. After the boy's father had sacrificed the young bull, Hannah, his mother, approached Eli and said, Pardon, my lord. As you live, my lord, 
I am the woman who stood near you here, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted my request. Now I in turn give him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. She left Samuel there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in my God. I have swallowed up my enemies. I rejoice in my victory. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. The bows of the mighty are broken, while the tottering gird on strength. The well-fed hire themselves out for bread, while the hungry batten on spoil. The barren wife bears seven sons, while the mother of many languishes. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. The Lord puts to death and gives life. He casts down to the netherworld. He raises up again. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He humbles. He also exalts. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. He raises the needy from the dust. From the dung heap he lifts up the poor. To seat them with nobles and make a glorious throne their heritage. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. O King of all nations and keystone of the church, come and save man whom you formed from the dust. Alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips. I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we continue with the narrative from Luke that began with the Annunciation continued uh, with the one we skipped yesterday because of the feast when Mary went to s greet Elizabeth and then John leapt in the womb. And now Mary says this great Magnificat prayer that is said every evening by those who pray the Liturgy of the Hours. <coughs> now, what what is it about Mary? I mean, there's something about Mary. Well, First off, we know that when she said at the Annunciation, how can this be since I do not know man? Why would she say this? Because she was, after all, betrothed to Joseph. And if it was foretold that she would have a son, that's not unusual if you're in a marriage, right? Well, Mary was one of a minority of women, but there were quite a number, though, at the time, who took vows of perpetual virginity. And these, the process for this is found in chapter 30 of the book of Numbers. Now we must remember that Mary, Joseph, and even Jesus were very faithful Jews. And Mary 
early in her life, decided to consecrate her life to God by taking these vows. Now, within the Mosaic law, Jewish law, Mary was able, these virgins were able, to be married, but only if A, the father of the woman agreed, and B, if the potential husband agreed to live in a state of perpetual continence, which meant that his wife would be perpetually a virgin. They would still share a household, but they wouldn't share the coedal act. And this is what Joseph had agreed to. So when the angel appears to Mary and says, oh, by the way, you're going to be pregnant with the Son of God, she's going to be like, wait, whoa. Okay, I already said I'm not going to be doing anything like this. And Joseph, who had already agreed to her state of perpetual virginity, would most naturally think that if his betrothed is pregnant, well, she didn't keep up with the vows, and that's why he was going to divorce her quietly, because he didn't want to embarrass her, nor did he want to bring scandal upon her and her family. But we know that it was through the Holy Spirit that the Son of God was conceived within Mary, which is fully within her vows of serving God always as a virgin. That's why she also remained a virgin throughout the rest of her life, because of those perpetual vows that she made, e even though she ended up raising the Son of God. So whenever we hear things about Mary, like that she wasn't a perpetually a virgin or something like that, we know that she was because of the vows she took according to Numbers chapter 30. Also, she always knew that that baby was God's son because it was told to her by the archangel Gabriel at the Annunciation. And here, when she is with Elizabeth in today's gospel and saying these words of great and ultimate praise to God, she is married to God and to Joseph here. And that's not mutually exclusive. Because Joseph takes care of the physical needs of her and her baby, Jesus, and God takes care of them. And she knows just from this that God sent his son to save the people of Israel, his chosen ones, and eventually everyone, as this was expanded out to us included. So as we enter these very final days before the coming of our Savior, perhaps we can take a little time to reflect upon Mary and the momentous thing that happened to her. And even Joseph, who took this on himself, not thinking he would be a father because he was marrying a consecrated virgin, but indeed embraced the role of being the foster father of our Lord and Savior. And what a beautiful thing. That love between the Holy Family reflects the love God has for his people that is personified in his Son and given to us through the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we approach the celebration of the birth of our Savior, let us turn our hearts and minds to the Father with confidence in his generous love and mercy. And our response is, come, Lord Jesus, come. For the church, that she may draw light and strength from the faith of Mary and Joseph, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For world leaders, that they may work humbly and resolutely for peace, the protection of all human life, and an end to the scourge of abortion, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For a swift end to the pandemic, that all may know of God's sovereign control and live with the unshakable hope that nothing is impossible with God, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For all the sick and their caregivers, that the Lord may keep un all under the shelter of his mercy, we pray to the Lord, Come, Lord Jesus, come. 
for our families, our own intentions that we bring forward today for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For all who have died, that the Lord may welcome them into the radiant light of his kingdom, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. Almighty God, prepare our hearts with your grace that, like Mary, we may be a worthy dwelling place for your Son. We ask you to hear these and all of our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord swore an oath to David, a pledge never to be broken. Your own offspring I will set upon your throne. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine... And water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the offering, with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from my hands for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Lord our God, for you have revealed the mystery of our salvation. Accept these offerings we bring before you and prepare us for the coming. Ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. For through the promised sending of Jesus Christ to earth for us, you revealed your goodness and unending love. Sharing in the hope of patriarchs and prophets, may we worthily prepare a dwelling place for the coming Messiah in our hearts. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy Sacrifice of the Mass will continue with Eucharistic Prayer 3, found on page 84, if you're following along. We acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You have formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care. <clears throat> so that, in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, 
you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you. And through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Gracious God, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to a sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. The Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believed, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. The hour had come for him to be glorified. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. We now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, and awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup, we praise you and bless you. Together, we praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. We pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us, and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember your one holy Catholic and apostolic church redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Anthony, our prime bishop, Jerry, our bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth, especially all of those suffering in this pandemic. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ, whose faith is known to you alone especially all of our friends and family who have passed that we remember during this joyous season. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with our ancestors in faith, with the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Saint Anastasia, whose memory we keep today, and with all the saints who have found you in ages past praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. On page 95, let us pray together with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The first communion prayer on page 97. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. Your king shall come to you. Let us pray. You chose Mary to be the mother of your son, to fulfill an ancient prophecy. 
May we who have shared in this Eucharist share in her joy as we await. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever and ever. Amen. Peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join me now in a prayer for peace in our world, country, state, and locality with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. In Christ, thank you once again for joining us for daily Mass. We pray that you have a beautiful and wonderful day. We will be back again tomorrow at noon, Thursday, Christmas Eve. We will have the vigil at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. We will also have Mass at midnight Central Standard Time. And it's Christmas Day at 10 o'clock a.m. Stay safe, stay healthy. Stay in a state of grace. Take care of yourselves and each other.